Prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers in men worldwide. And for decades, the main tool doctors have used to detect it has been the PSA blood test. But here's the problem. The PSA test is far from perfect. It misses some cancers and it falsely alarms men who don't actually have cancer, leading to anxiety, invasive biopsies and sometimes unnecessary treatment. That's why scientists have been searching for something better. Enter the PSE test, short for Prostate Screening EPI Switch. It's a new test that combines PSA with cutting edge epigenetic analysis, and it's showing results that could completely change how prostate cancer is diagnosed. Let's rewind a little and talk about how we got here. Before PSA came along in the 1980s, the main way doctors picked up prostate cancer was by digital rectal exam, the manual check that many men dreaded. PSA was a game changer. For the first time, a simple blood test could help find cancers earlier. But over time, its flaws became clear. It was like opening Pandora's box. Yes, more cancers were found early, but thousands of men were also put through unnecessary biopsies and treatments, and some aggressive cancers slipped through undetected. So here we are today with MRI scans, genetic profiling, and now epigenetic tests like PSE trying to solve the puzzle PSA couldn't fully crack. Now let's look closer at PSA itself. PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. It's a protein released into the blood by prostate cells. High PSA levels can indicate prostate cancer, but also many other conditions like an enlarged prostate or even a urinary tract infection. So here's the reality. PSA has an accuracy of about 55% in detecting prostate cancer. That means nearly half of the time, the test is either flagging cancer that's not there or missing cancer that actually is. Think of it this way. If your smoke alarm went off every time you made toast, but sometimes failed to sound when your kitchen was on fire, would you trust it? Probably not. And here's another angle. Imagine sitting in a doctor's office. Your PSA comes back high. The doctor says, we'll need to schedule a biopsy. You go through the worry, the waiting and the procedure, only to hear later that nothing was there. Relief, yes, but also frustration that you went through it at all. That's the lived reality for tens of thousands of men each year. Now here's where the PSE test changes the game. Instead of relying only on PSA levels, it adds a second layer of science, epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how your DNA is packaged and folded inside your cells. Imagine your DNA is a huge library of books. Not every book is open and being read. Some are tightly closed, others bookmarked and ready to use. The PSE test looks for specific DNA folding patterns in immune cells that act like fingerprints for prostate cancer. These are called chromosome confirmation signatures. So the PSE test doesn't just ask how much PSA is in your blood. It also asks, is your immune system showing the telltale DNA patterns linked to prostate cancer? When you combine these two signals, PSA plus epigenetic folding patterns, accuracy improves dramatically. So how good is it? In early studies, including one called the Prostagram Pilot, the PSE test reached about 94% accuracy in detecting prostate cancer. Compare that to PSA alone at about 55% accuracy. That's like upgrading from a coin toss to a nearly certain call. Even more important, the PSE test could reduce unnecessary biopsies. In some reports, it's estimated to spare up to 75% of men from going through a biopsy they didn't need. Picture this, 100 men all get a high PSA. 
Under today's system, maybe half of them are marched straight into biopsy. Painful, stressful, and in many cases, pointless. Now imagine the same group with PSE layered in. Three quarters of those unnecessary biopsies avoided. That's not just statistics. That's fathers, husbands and brothers spared weeks of anxiety, painful procedures and scars, both physical and emotional. Now you might hear words like sensitivity and specificity thrown around. Let's break those down simply. Sensitivity means when cancer is there, how good is the test at spotting it? Specificity means when cancer is not there, how good is the test at giving the all clear? Think of sensitivity as a detective who never misses a clue. And specificity as a judge who never accuses the wrong person. PSA alone is mediocre at both. PSE dramatically improves both, meaning it finds more true cancers and avoids more false alarms. For patients, that means fewer sleepless nights worrying about false positives and fewer missed cancers that go undetected until later stages. So the big question, can you get it today? Yes, but access is limited. Right now, the PSE test is being offered in private clinics in the UK, including Imperial College's private care services. It's also commercially available in the US, where it is reimbursed under Medicare. In the UK, the insurer Bupa has recently begun covering it in private plans. But, and this is important, it's not yet available through the NHS as part of routine public screening. That means it's still out of reach for many men unless they go private. Here's how it works in practice. If your PSE test comes back with a low likelihood of prostate cancer, you might avoid a biopsy and instead keep monitoring over time. If it shows a high likelihood, then your doctor can recommend targeted follow-up testing like MRI or biopsy with much more confidence. So instead of the shotgun approach of biopsying nearly everyone with high PSA, PSE helps doctors take a smarter, more personalized path. And think about what that means emotionally. Instead of walking out of the clinic with nothing but worry, you walk out with clarity, either reassurance or a clear action plan. Of course, no test is perfect, and PSE, while promising, still has hurdles to clear. The studies so far have been relatively small, often around 147 men. That's not nearly enough to establish it as a global gold standard yet. We need larger trials across more diverse populations before it can be widely adopted. And while insurers like Bupa and Medicare covering the test is a big step, National health systems will want more data before making it routine. But here's the key. Every gold standard starts somewhere. Mammograms, colonoscopies, even PSA itself. They all began as experimental or private tests before becoming routine. PSE could follow the same path. And here's something worth reflecting on. Nearly every major advance in cancer detection faced pushback at first. Mammograms were controversial. Colonoscopies were resisted. Even pap smears had to fight for adoption. But today, each of those tests has saved millions of lives. The question is, could PSE be the prostate cancer equivalent? So what should men do today? If you're concerned about prostate cancer risk, whether because of age, family history, or rising PSA. You can talk to your doctor about whether PSE testing is available through private channels. And even if it isn't accessible yet where you live, knowing about it empowers you. It means you can ask sharper questions, weigh your options more clearly, and avoid rushing into decisions based only on PSA. Knowledge is power, and sometimes, it's peace of mind. But even with those limitations, the PSE test represents something exciting. It shows how combining traditional markers like PSA with new genomic science 
can create breakthroughs that directly impact patients' lives. It's not just about technology, it's about fewer men enduring unnecessary biopsies, fewer false alarms and more cancers being caught earlier when treatment is most effective. And for families it means fewer conversations, starting with the words, we might have found something but we're not sure. So is the PSE test the new gold standard? Not yet, but it could be on its way. For now, it's a powerful second opinion alongside PSA, one that brings clarity where uncertainty used to be. And if you or someone you love has ever faced the stress of a PSA result that left more questions than answers, you'll know just how valuable that clarity can be. If this video helped clarify anything for you or someone you care about, please take one second to like this video because it really helps the algorithms share it with others who need this information. Subscribe to the Second Opinion Network. It's free and you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. And share it with a friend who might be facing this decision. It could be the most important thing you do for them today. I'm Peter and this is the Second Opinion Network. Until next time, stay informed, stay strong, and stay supported.